Today we're going to be talking about cells. Although there are lots of different cells, most of them can be divided into two main categories, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Karyon is a Greek word that means nucleus. Pro means before and eu means true. Prokaryotic cells can be divided into bacteria and archaea, while eukaryotic cells are further divided into animal, plant, fungi, and protists. The prokaryotic cell is a simple, small cell with no nucleus. The main parts of the prokaryotic cell include the flagella, which is like an appendage and can help the cell to move. Bacteria can also have various projections sticking out of their cell walls called pili, which are hair-like appendages found on the surface of many bacteria. Pili are needed in order for bacterial conjugation to occur. Bacterial conjugation is basically the transfer of genetic material, a plasmid, between bacterial cells by direct cell-to-cell -cell contact. Pili can also be used to attach to surfaces or interact with other cells. This is important for disease-causing bacteria. The DNA found in all living things and which acts as a kind of a recipe book telling your body how to build itself is made up of the same chemicals throughout nature. That's because we all started off from the same point and have evolved into the wealth of species found on Earth today. A bacterial cell is also quite a lot different compared to other cells. To start with, bacteria are a lot simpler than eukaryotes, and instead of having their DNA tightly wound up in a nucleus, it's found in the cytoplasm. Prokaryotic cells have ribosomes, which are the protein builders or the protein synthesizers of the cell. They're like construction guys who connect one amino acid at a time and build long chains. Ribosomes are found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, however their compositions differ. Additionally, prokaryotes have a protective layer outside the cell called the cell wall. This cell wall is the target of lots of antibacterial drugs that we use to treat infectious diseases. Finally, holding everything together is the cell membrane, similar to that which you'd find around a eukaryotic cell. All cells have a double membrane that separates the inside content of the cell from the outside environment. The cytoplasm is basically a word used to describe all the liquidy bits floating around inside the cell. Eukaryotic cells, while very similar in function to prokaryotic cells, are much larger and more complex. They are typically characterized by the presence of a prominent nucleus. The eukaryotic cell is much larger than the prokaryotic cell, and this larger size means that there's a lot more space inside the cell. The cytoskeleton is a series of intercellular proteins that help a cell with shape, support, and movement. The cytoskeleton has three main structural components, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. The cytoskeleton mediates movement by helping the cell move in its environment and mediating the movement of the cell's components. The plasma membrane for a eukaryotic cell is the same kind of structure and has the same function as the plasma membrane of a prokaryotic cell. The Golgi apparatus is responsible for secretion of the waste products from the cell. The nucleus is the storage site of genetic information and the site of DNA replication. The nucleus contains the nucleolus where ribosomes are assembled and the nuclear pores are important for ribosomes to leave the nucleus. Cilia are slender, microscopic, hair-like structures or organelles that extend from the surface of nearly all mammalian cells. Moving cilia are found in the lungs, respiratory tract, and middle ear. These cilia have a rhythmic wave or beating motion. They work, for instance, to keep the airways clear of mucus and dirt, allowing us to breathe easily and without irritation. The mitochondria is the site of energy metabolism and synthesis of high-energy ATP. Peroxisomes perform oxidative metabolism of nutrients using oxygen to generate water. The endoplasmic reticulum is continuous with the outer membrane of the nucleus and consists of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The difference between the two is that the rough ER has ribosomes all over its outer surface and serves as the site of protein synthesis, while the smooth endoplasmic reticulum lacks ribosomes and functions in lipid metabolism, carbohydrate metabolism, and detoxification. Ribosomes perform precisely the same function in eukaryotic cells as they perform in prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic ribosomes are larger and more complex than prokaryotic ribosomes, but they're very similar.
So let's quickly recap what, so far what we've learned between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. First of all, prokaryotic cells lack a nucleus, while eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. Ribosomes are seen in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. However, they are slightly different in that in prokaryotes, it's made up of a 30S and a 50S subunit, while in eukaryotes, it's made up of a 40S and 60S subunit. Since prokaryotic cells are relatively smaller, they don't have any membrane-bound organelles, while on the other hand, eukaryotic cells, which are larger, have many membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotic cells have cell walls, while in eukaryotes, only fungi and plants have cell walls. Animal cells do not have cell walls. Prokaryotic cells are unicellular, while eukaryotic cells can be either unicellular or multicellular. Thank you for tuning in to Biology Made Simple. Please tune in for more videos.